Thank you, Shlomo, for this wonderful guidance and all these advices, very thoughtful. Um, before we let you go, I just would like to ask you, perhaps uh, everyone would be interested to know what is your practicing routine? How you keep yourself in a great shape and perhaps what you can really see how it has changed or evolved over your career of a great violin virtuoso when you were 15, 16, 20 years to the present day. What, what do you find the most efficient way to not just to keep yourself in good shape, but to feel that you are like Casals would say when he was 80 something years old, why he practiced because, you know, he said, I feel I'm getting better. I'm improving. So what keeps you on that path? What do you feel? Yeah. Well, thank you for, for the question. Um, it's not an easy subject because what happens is that you deal with a changing mind. You know, minds have different phases and different stages. We, it's physiological. And as you advance with age, you encounter different things, different set of problems or different set of advantages for that matter. Um, I don't want to overcomplicate or over or, or being over philosophical on this subject. However, uh, experience has taught me how to manage practice. We all know that the professionals, we know that and professionals do it and use it. Uh, sometimes um, accumulating base does not end with 10, 15 years of violin playing. It can continue to 40 years of playing, 50 years of playing, etc. That's one thing. And the second thing is I can tell you that as life progresses, it will be determined on how loyal or how faithful you were to all the work that you have been doing. And that will also determine the amount of practice first necessary and second one, the artistic curiosity, which should still continue to guide you in your own lifetime. So I can tell you either, at either way you look at it, students look at it in a different way, the more professional ones look at it in a different way, et cetera, et cetera. There are always grades to everything. But uh, if you love the violin, then you will stay with it. For sure, yes, yes, yeah. But uh, perhaps you can just maybe elaborate a little bit. What is actual pieces which you feel if you keep them in your repertoire, if you come back if to on a regular basis, you know that you have certain connection with the violin, not as a musician, but as, as a violinist. Or... Right. Well, I think... Um... I, I personally, I don't have anything specific. I do something specific only when it is more necessary for me to uh, study a certain work or be at a certain deadline with something, etc. You mean you're very natural? You don't practice uh, caprices on a regular basis or scale? I practice caprices. I don't practice scales, but I practice caprices. Caprices are good enough. It covers everything. So you go... Uh, one a, a, a day you, you switch or you feel that you need to pay, maybe pay attention to certain things? I, I find I find the caprices um, the higher the higher form of etudes. Yeah, it's I think really it, very much like uh, what, what Paganini has said. Yes, it's dedicated to artists, but artists, violinists, of course, artists, yeah. I, I do it, but I also do other things. You know, I, I practice other forms of discipline. I I can, every once in a while, I can switch and go do all Isaiah's or do all Ernst. 
Mm -hmm. uh, I like doing it uh, that way because it, it keeps you in an overall, overall, gives you an overall view. I, I think that a overall spectrum is important and you do whatever is necessary to maintain that spectrum. Of course, it's very individual. Sometimes you find, or I find, to do a little more, and, and it depends on our, you know, state, uh, psychological, physical stage. Sometimes we need to do more. But I'm, I'm sure everyone curious. You already mentioned Paganini, some uh, violinistic stuff. Is I, I also find very helpful because it's really gives you all the insights about the shifts, about string crossing, about uh, awareness, how much pressure we need to put on the string. And coordination, of course, Paganini is for coordination. And for the mental, for the musical uh, bonding, do you have certain repertoire? You just know that if you go, it's more. I I was taught by I was taught by my teacher uh, a lot of Bach. Oh yes, I That's actually really played Bach good. for Casals. Absolutely, I, I had the big honor of playing for him some Bach as well, and of course he was, uh, yeah. A, leg a legendary figure or a legendary moment. It, it even the moment itself is enough, you know. Just being in the in the company of a great master or someone who had such conclusions of life. I also had other experiences, uh, you know. Like for example, I was I find uh, to have been very honored or very lucky to have worked with uh, Eugene Ormandy. Uh, or Antal Dorati, you know, people that are, or Chilibidake, uh, people that, that are long in the history books, but what happens is that you study something, you pick up something, some component from each one of them, and you use it. When you practice, I am able to switch. In other words, I'm not totally locked into Paganini caprices. I'm not totally locked. You know, one day I would say, ah, I did not study this for a long time. For example, this masterclass made me realize that Polonaise I did not play in some 40 years, 30 <laughs> years, my God. Uh, I don't spend three hours on practicing Carmen on any form, because for me, Carmen is beautiful music, but over overplayed. But sometimes if I would like to uh, uh, I don't know, keep something in shape and not do either caprices or errands, then I would uh, do something else. I would I would find a difficult piece of music and I would dwell on it. And would you also say that uh, keeping always your door open for the new repertoire, just learning constantly something new also give us this edge of uh, being aware that we you know, we need to still, not just to get used to what we play well, but somehow get out of our comfort zone and consciously learn a new repertoire or play chamber music. Of course, it's a, it's a great remedy for anything because you stop listening to yourself, you start, start listening to your colleagues and to the music in general. I mean, I really love, honestly, I love both. But I mean, during this pandemic, I studied this. I can explain the 10 downs that I'm doing, even, you know, at least, you know, I worked it out, you know, so you keep yourself. It's, it's a way of life. I, I like to say always that it is my most demanding wife. 